Welcome to Lunchbox Sessions, bite-sized industrial training. This is Carl from LunchboxSessions.com, and this video will be about the use of relief valves to achieve something commonly known as cross-port braking. Some people say cross-port relieving, but really since we have a flywheel mass, a runaway mass connected to our hydraulic motor, Cross-port braking is going to be a more accurate description of the application, even though we are definitely using relief valves to achieve the effect. So I've got my directional valve running. I've energized the solenoid on the left side of the valve and flow is coming from the pump and is turning our hydraulic motor clockwise. Let's just think for a moment, what happens when this valve closes at the center position? If there's a large flywheel mass connected to our hydraulic motor, can we realistically ask that motor to stop instantly? And I think you know that the answer to that is no, that could be very damaging. We might damage the hydraulic motor, we might snap the connecting shaft, we might produce a hydraulic pressure in the motor circuit that could burst a hydraulic hose. Ah uh, yes, and that's a very interesting one to think about because as I let go of the valve here in a moment and we return to the center valve position, the closed center, where do you think the pressure will be at the hydraulic motor? Will it continue to be on the left hand port as it is now or will the maximum pressure be somewhere else? Let's find out. I'm going to center the valve. Oh, there we go. Our high pressure moved over to the right hand side of the motor. Does that make sense? Basically what happened is that when we closed the valve, the flywheel mass was the energy to turn the motor and the motor essentially became a pump. Right, so without the cross port relief valve acting as a braking device, we would very likely have produced a hose bursting pressure on the right hand port of the motor, or we might have sheared the shaft. Something catastrophic would have occurred. So it makes sense to use the braking valve with a suitable setting adjusted into the valve spring to keep the pressure on the outlet side of the motor, which becomes a pump outlet, keep that pressure reasonable and bring our flywheel mass to a more gradual stop. And of course the same holds true for the opposite direction of rotation. When we run the motor counterclockwise, the same effect takes place just using the lower of our two braking valves. Here we go, I'll center the valve and there's our relief valve acting as a braking device. Now what you may be wondering about is these check valves known as anti-cavitation valves and this connection to tank. Why do those valves become active? Why all of a sudden is a check valve open during the braking sequence? That's a very interesting one. Obviously oil cannot pass through these check valves on the way back to tank. That's the wrong direction. But they do open up and if we look at the flow arrows we see that we are drawing in some new fluid from the tank. Why is that? Well, if our hydraulic motor was the type that did not have an external case drain line, as some motors are set up that way, if it was one that had only two main connections, two ports, then perhaps we wouldn't have needed these anti-cavitation check valves. But because we're using a motor that is designed to take some back pressuring on its outlet port and it has an external case drain line, we need these anti-cavitation check valves to help draw in fluid back into the motor circuit that will have gone missing during the braking sequence on the case drain line. It won't be very much, it'll be a small amount of fluid leaking back to tank on the case drain, but if this braking sequence happens many times per day, many times per hour, then any loss of fluid here has to be made up during the braking cycle with a fresh volume of oil from the tank. Otherwise, our motor that has become a pump would be suffering the effects of cavitation. So here's the missing oil joining in with the fluid coming across the braking valve to make up and provide the right volume to pass through the motor. Most of it going around the braking circuit loop, but a small amount of leakage, especially at those high braking pressures, small amount of leakage, internal lubrication flow 
headed back to tank on the K-strain line. So those anti-cavitation valves are sometimes referred to as makeup check valves or anti-void valves. I think you can sort of sense the purpose and meaning in those terms. And the braking valves are there to keep us from producing dangerous pressures or a shaft snapping amount of torque in a circumstance where we have an overrunning load, a flywheel mass. Okay, that's today's video. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. We have hundreds of interactive resources like this live schematic, so you can try out your wild ideas without blowing anything up. Get started at lunchboxsessions.com.